Hey guys, it's Julie from Plan to Create, and I am here today to do a flip through of my February pages. You'll notice right off the bat that I am in half letter discs, and I'm loving it. Zena, you asked how that transition has been going between the personal wide and the half letter this month. Great, it's working perfectly for me. I love the personal wide size. If I wanted to use a smaller size planner, it would be a high contender. However, for reasons that I mentioned in that previous video, just about um, like like storage, long-term storage, this has definitely won me over. And then obviously it's so simple, you guys, if you're in the United States and you're using letter paper, you know, printing something, trimming it in half, punching it and popping it right into your planner is amazing. It's awesome. I don't have to do all the different trimming around the corners and it just seems like a, like a no-brainer to be using this size for me right now. So I'm really liking it. Um, I did not have this cover in the previous video and you will see these little holes here. This is a Filofax A5 binder. It actually came with rings, ring binder, um, and I removed those. I watched a YouTube video and had my husband help me take those out. So I have like lavender plastic covers on both the front and back. I just slide that back one right into this pocket and it works for me perfectly. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of where I'm at, what I'm using, and now I'll walk you through a little bit of my month. Starting at the very beginning, you'll see I do have these clear tabs. This is a February tab. I like to have all the months kind of lined out in my planner. And I basically took the clear tab and then I stuck a piece of beautiful vellum from the planner spot and then I've clipped that with my mission board and clipped those all together so that when I pull my February tab, it opens straight to my monthly view and my mission board. So if you happen to watch my previous February setup video, it was setting up all personal wide, but I basically took that same concept and I just applied it directly to here. So it was really slick. I'd already made a lot of the decisions, you know, what stamps I was gonna use, what colors where. So you might have seen, like, I pulled out all the pink things. I have a little bit of black in there, but I did a lot of my pink inks. I grabbed my February monthly stamp sets. I'll pull these out. These are from Studio Calico, the newer one. This is an older Studio Calico monthly set. And then I have this little hearts set from the stamp market. So I felt like those would be some things that I could definitely use throughout my pages. And I kind of went to bat. I, um, I did all the pink. I did, <laughs> I laid out my foundation using the pink. And then I remembered that I really enjoyed this process of doing mission boards. So this is a Studio Calico digital file that you can purchase on their site. It's like $1.99 and you're able to take it and print it directly onto paper. Or you'll see I have some appear printed onto sticker paper that I use my silhouette to cut around to make my own stickers. Love this guy. But I decided to add this in for my mission board this month. And in the process of that, I thought, oh, you know, the yellows, like I'll kind of be able to deal with that. But it turns out that I really, really liked the addition of the warmth of the yellow. You're gonna see in my first couple page or my first week of pages, it's just really pink, pink, pink. And it's fine. It's very, you know, February-ish, but it just kind of fell flat for me. And I just quickly realized that the addition of the yellow was going to be something that I enjoyed. So, um, you'll kind of see that as I walk through my pages, but basically, um, I wanted to kind of talk about this really quickly. This has been something that I did in the past, and this is just a really fun, like kind of creative exercise that also can kind of help you stop and think about where you're at in your life. I keep these very light because I'm planning to share my pages and I'm not going to probably go into a great deal of detail. I'm basically a super private person, so the fact that I'm sharing, you know, stuff on YouTube is like, oh, how is that even happening? But basically, I just kind of try to divvy these out. Um, if you have ever seen Moxie Life or like Cultivating What Matters, I forget the name of their brand, but basically they kind of help you um, take your life into sections. So you have like work, personal, relationships, um, financial, or any of those like overall categories. And I just took that concept and tried to put it like so there'd be a category per label. And like I said, like some of the areas I am not really wanting to work in per se, or I don't have specific goals. And so I just chose areas that I did want to work in and things that I wanted to, I was willing to share online or, you know, on YouTube. And that's kind of how I built this. And I think that this is just fun. I love taking stamp sets and pairing them inside these little labels, things that fit well. I like just taking the time to think through, you know, areas of my life that could stand some improvement. 
I definitely fell behind on doctor's appointments through 2020, you know, what with COVID and all that. So that was a goal for me to get back on track this year. So I definitely included some of that. I wanted to read a couple of books. I did that. So, you know, just kind of things that are help you be a little bit mindful about what you actually want to do with your days and then accomplish that instead of just letting the days get away from you. Being able to do it like in a creative, fun way with stamps and maybe stickers, you know, that's that's how I like to roll. So you'll see that it's not like perfectly centered here. It's honestly a whole bigger like letter size sheet that prints out. You can like resize it according to how you want it. Um, I think this next month I just went ahead and sized it really large and took it right off the page. I think that that looks kind of nice, but this one I left more of a margin for my disc punches. So totally, you know, you can lay it out however you want. I felt like I just had a little bit of extra white space there. So I chose to grab some washi to fill that in just to kind of keep it aesthetic and then to kind of, you know, tie in with the other opposite page here. But all in all, um, fun exercise, good for, you know, meeting goals, but also was a really, really good springboard for a color theme. And granted, it came a little bit late to the party, so I'd already had, like, all the pinks going, but I was able to sprinkle those in as I went throughout the month. And so if you are just struggling to find, like, what colors would you want to put together, you know, if you just can't quite bring your brain around that, you know, pop over to Pinterest, see, see pictures that you like, and, like, what colors do they have? Or for me, this one really helped me narrow down the colors that I was going to use throughout the month. You know, you don't have to come up with it all on your own. Sometimes you can use art to inspire you, and that's definitely what I did here. Camille asked me over in my Facebook group, like, was it hard for me to use this color theme throughout the month? And there have been months where it has been more of a struggle, but this, like, honestly, for me, when I take the time and I grab the things and pull them together, I also have some other things like in a drawer that I keep, you know, I store things by pink, by yellow, so those I have also as resources. But when I grab these things and I have them actually sitting out on my desk, to be honest, it makes using this color theme really simple because it's like these are what you have to choose from, Julie. Pick one. <laughs> Instead of like digging through all the all the materials or all the supplies that I have. Back when I was scrapbooking, I used to just dig through my supplies forever trying to find the perfect item. And I'm no longer doing that. It's like, okay, pick the perfect item from this sheet. Go. <laughs> and that makes it really simple. So I think that sometimes just narrowing yourself down is is kind of a good thing. And you know, if you don't have a ton of supplies to work from, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I would also say that using inks and stamps definitely help because they're reusable. You know, you're not cons they're not consumable. What is the word? I can never think of the word. But basically, you know, things that are not going to run out. You can just continue to use them over and over. Those are great things to have on hand in order to stretch your supplies throughout a month. If you only have a finite sticker sheet, obviously you're going to run out of things after a while and maybe you're going to be reluctant to even put them on paper because you're like, oh, if I use it, I can't use it. You know, weird stuff like that. Or maybe that's just me. So all in all, very happy with the color theme, especially happy with adding the yellow and the gray. I feel like it kind of added some depth. And now let's kind of walk through these pages. I always clip um, a little peach palm here so that I can see my monthly view and then go straight to my weekly. So I'll unclip that there, add it back into my other clips in my tray. And let's walk through this. This month, I chose to use the month on one page and I combined it directly into the week on two page horizontal. And then it ends back here with a grid page like for this month. So that is what I chose to use. I listed these in the shop in varying sizes. And so they would only be available like this month of February. And I thought that that would just be kind of fun to shake it up for any of you that just enjoy trying something new then you could jump in, actually, you know, do the whole month plan it along there with me and see how it goes. I think sometimes by using it, you're able to see like, yep, that really works for me or mm -mm, nope, I really love my, you know, two page monthly spread. So you don't know it sometimes until you try something else. That's kind of the premise behind this thought. And for me also, I just really, I need an excuse to use some of these different inserts that I design. If I only used the same ones the entire year, I feel like I wouldn't be able to understand how they work in a planner or be able to sample that for someone else. So that's always in the back of my mind too. This whole month was just a really crazy month for me. Uh, we traveled for the first week of February and then I came back and immediately had a surgery on my forehead for a basal cell carcinoma. Basically, I get skin cancers. I've had several of these. It's like my family is very prone. My parents, my sister and I all have these. 
I fortunately have never had melanoma, but I have had several basal cell skin cancers. And so they did a surgery on Wednesday the 10th, and honestly, it's my forehead. I just took it really easy, like for a week and a half. I think I just stretched it out and just kind of rested and just did really light activities because I wanted to make sure that my scar healed well. It already is like super long and kind of Harry Potter-ish. I wanted to make sure that it gets the best chance of looking looking nice in, you know, time. So, honestly, that kind of meant, that threw this whole month off basically. It's been a great month. We had a great travel. You know, I'm happy that I've had that surgery. It's over with and I've had time to heal, but all in all, it's made for an interesting month. I will say doing just this little month on one page, like this is it. This is the only monthly view I had this month. I I can't decide. I didn't I didn't hate it. I don't know. I I actually feel like there's pros and there's cons. I would say that one of the pros is that I'm able to see at a quick glance, I can, you know, tell like how busy my month was. The second thing that I really enjoyed was just not repeating. Once you've taken the time to fill out your whole month, then you're repeating and writing the same exact things down on your weekly pages. For me, it was nice just to have the little heart stamp saying like, yep, you have an activity there. Okay, what was it on the 16th? I can look and be like, oh yeah, the cleaners were coming. So to me, it was nice to not duplicate my information. That's one thing. The other thing about that though is just seeing a little heart there. It's like, okay, well what in the world is happening on the 18th? I don't remember. So I will say, like if I hadn't written it in my weekly pages yet, the beauty of this is that I do use my iCalendar on my phone. So I had that to refer to. Like this, I could see this and be like, ooh, what was that appointment? And you can see I started to write little times on there because that would kind of help trigger like, oh, I remember what that is because that's 8 a.m. and I'm going to surgery, for example. Also thinking like February 2021, still a pretty slow month in the whole scheme of where we're at in the world. So this was like a perfect month to try this out. If and when things open back up and we start to put more into our schedules, you know, obviously this might be a little bit crazy for some of you if you have several things going on each day. But for me, I one heart kind of could mean one appointment or it could be two. Sometimes I put the second heart on there, but sometimes it's like, yes, you have something scheduled that day. Sometimes I just like to look at my calendar and see that, like, is it an open day that I'm scheduling or is it something where I'm working around a schedule that's already committed? So I'd love to hear from you guys on that. I've seen some people strictly use the smaller month on one page style calendar. Is that something you use in your planner on a regular basis? And if so, you know, talk to me. How does that work for you? Or if that's like boggling to you, go ahead and comment and let me know that too. Cause I'm curious what you guys think of just the smaller condensed monthly schedule. I'll quickly share some of the products that I used here. Uh, the February is obviously this monthly stamp set. The big two is the Jack number set from Studio Calico. It's such a fun way to make a big impact. Um, the little hearts were just from this same little monthly set and it was just a really easy way to go ahead and just add those appointments. They felt I felt like they were perfect for the scale of this page. Obviously you can use like a larger item on a bigger monthly spread, but you know, the smaller pages you go, A6, pocket, like obviously little tiny things like this work really well on those smaller spaces, just keeping scale in mind. These are label stickers, like I said, they are from this digital file that I then print onto sticker paper. And I have a silhouette that I'm able to, you know, cut these out. I love doing that. It's fun to print tons of different sizes and just spread them out wherever I feel like they work. That's, I don't know, I just really enjoyed doing that this month. I think that's it for the monthly spread, so let's flow right into the weekly spreads. Again, you see here that first week off the bat, I had set these up with like the week number, with all of the dates. I put in the little dinner plate stamp, that's what I use this space for, and then hydration tracking. This week we were out of town a good chunk of the week, so I didn't really do the hydration, but I did add like the restaurants and places that we ate at. You know, all in all, it's like, it's fine. This is, there's nothing wrong with this week, but it did, like I said, just start to kind of run all in together. Like nothing had like separate value. Is that a fair way of saying that? So when it's just all pink, it's just, it's just a lot. One thing off the bat I would say is that I kind of wish I had used a smaller Studio L2E, just the dates stamps here. I feel like those being the same size as these, you know, I would have maybe been okay with that being smaller. That's a super nitpicky thing, but that's one thing I would probably change. And then obviously like adding a little bit more color variation here would have been okay, but all in all, totally fine. Totally not a big deal. This next week, I started to add a little bit more of that yellow, um, but this week honestly was not a, 
this was a lot of rest happening. You can see on Wednesday the 10th, it was like rest, rest, rest. Uh, I think my biggest activity this week was maybe printing some of those labels and cutting them. It, it was pretty, pretty slim here. The biggest activity here for Valentine's Day was to water my plants. <laughs> That's kind of silly, but I am trying to remember to do that on Sunday. Just keep things alive. And you'll see that I just, I threw that on there totally out of color scheme and you know, it is what it is. It's like at the end of the week like that, Honestly, I don't really care as much about it becoming, you know, making it look all perfect. It's a little bit about just just throwing things on there that apply to the circumstances. I think I added this like orangier heart here just to try to add a little bit more of that yellow depth. And so then I did come through and add this and this one just to create that trio. They say like triangles are good to add. And so I don't know, Karen, um, Karen asked me on Instagram, like, how do you lay it out? I wish I could watch you lay these out because you know, she's like, I just throw things on. And to be honest, I throw things on too. Like I throw this on and then I maybe add in something else to help it look more balanced. But all in all, I mean, this page isn't super balanced. It's just kind of crazy and it ends up just reflecting the week in what you have going on. I don't, I used to worry a little bit more about lining everything up when I was using my initial vertical pages. I feel like I made it more of a canvas. Now I honestly just like let my plans dictate where things go. If I have a plan later in the day, I throw it there. Earlier in the day, I throw it higher. You know, I don't really think about where it's gonna, how it's gonna look when I put it down. I just put things down and then maybe I add in some other elements to help balance that. Maybe, <laughs> like not even always. So it just kind of becomes whatever it is. I got some washi in the mail that day, so I threw it on there. I was like, oh, those are cute. They kind of go with my color scheme. You know, throw it on. That indicates when my order arrived. I don't know if I even intended to do the three triangle of the Coffee Monster Co. elements there, but it's kind of how it worked out. So they really literally are date specific to those things. So it just worked out. Like I can't say that I perfectly planned that. Okay, scooting right through. Um, this week was super slim. Like it just was me honestly laying really low. So, you know, I just didn't come through and add a lot of detailing. I didn't even bother to throw in some of my elements of like labels. I, I did one day there with my dad's birthday. It's fun having them in town. We're able to make him a cake and have him come over. You know, that's always nice to be able to celebrate with family after years of living many miles away from them. But other than that, like this is a kind of a thing where at the end of the week, I might be inclined to come through with some cute stamps and just fill in some of the space just for fun. I think now though that I'm doing my Hobonichi, that's kind of becoming more of that fill for me. So I'm gonna actually show you a couple of these pages. So you can see I'm using a ton of those like labels and other little colorful things here on these pages. And I've only got two weeks done so far for for February. This is more of an after the fact, so I'll be coming through this weekend to finish the rest of these pages. But you can see like, this is definitely like collected, it's stained together. I feel like I'm pouring a little bit more of that decorative effort into that. So, I mean, it comes and goes though. It just depends on how inspired I am. I just was probably not at my desk really planning this week. I was reading, I was doing some other activities, laying really low. So that's part of what happens there this last week you can see I'm still in the midst of it but I am sprinkling in a few more of the colors I, I I like the way this looks it feels more used to me I'm definitely more actively using these pages I'll kind of zip you through a couple of the things that I wanted to mention um, first off I took these cotton paper like transparent square flags and I threw the Coffee Monster Co. stickers on there. So here's kind of a tip, like I love these little stickers, but I feel like I need like 900 of them in order to like adequately plant, you know, show what I've been up to in my pages. So this was a really quick way to take something and be able to reuse it from week to week. I just stuck it on the air. It's like this little thing that as soon as Monday was over, I would carry it to the following Monday. I'll probably do something like this in March, but I'm not sure that I'll use these exact pink ones. They're getting a little bit like, I've picked up ink and stuff on the sticky flag. So I think that they're lifespan is, is wrapping up. But that was kind of fun to do this week. I did it on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Those were my typical work days. I need a little one that has like a, a filming guy because I typically do like computer design work for Etsy on Mondays. I film on Wednesdays. And then this is like a cute little like planner and washi sticker. So it's like I try to you know, make samples or play a little bit more in my planners on Friday. When I take those away though, obviously I need to have something there to kind of show like what I actually did. So I did use that like label sticker to say office hours just to have, you know, if and when I remove this, it actually reflects what I did. So another thing just to note here, I have a tracking sticker from the planner spot. I just thought it would be interesting to keep track of. This isn't something I'm trying to remind myself of to blow dry my hair. It's something like how often am I washing and drying my hair, trying to wash and dry 
less often to just keep the health of my hair. And I don't track a ton of things in my planner, but that was something I could do. And I also, just like I said, made use of this open space. Um, this is, I just got these new stickers from Planner Fluent. I really am into transparent stickers, but I'm also into like functional uses of them. So I feel like pairing them with icon stickers has been really fun. You can see I paired here with Dewdrop shape with the icons. And here, Planner Fluent has released this kind of new little square shape. I think that those are really fun. I enjoy that. I like that better than just having a white icon on my white page, at least on a weekly spread. Back here on my month where I have a little less space and I want it to be a little bit airier and light and bright, then that's fine for me to use an icon white on white. But otherwise, I really do enjoy a little border around those, so it's fun to to pair those together. I also love to pair, like I got these little stickers from Paper Panda. I got a whole little slew of these guys. They're really cute and fun. But I paired that there with a label sticker and then here I just chose to stick it on there right by itself. So you can kind of go back and forth. But obviously this gives the page a little bit more life. This looks a little bit more subdued. Completely depends on, you know, what aesthetic you're looking for. And, you know, you can do both. It doesn't, there's not one hard, fast rule or way to do it. So other than that, I feel like that kind of wraps up my weekly section. I think in every Sunday you might see this little icon circle. I just stamped a little circle there in aqua. Aqua is the color I've kind of assigned for my Facebook group. So I just wanted to just have a quick little visual reminder there like, hey, you know, don't forget to post the challenge for the following week or, you know, a little share your pages here thread. I <laughs> just have to have that little visual cue there for myself and that worked out well even though it wasn't in the right color scheme. If I had put just a pink dot there I might have been like staring at it like what was that for? So the aqua signaled to me what that was all about. And then finally the end of my little combination here with the month on one, week on two, it always wraps up here with a nice little grid on the back. It says this month and I just started off using this kind of as a list of things I wanted to accomplish this month and then just realized like towards the end of the month I really hadn't used the majority of this page. So I kind of came back through here and spent some time just thinking through kind of a reflections, lessons learned, what could I do differently next month to accomplish that. So I spent a little bit of time doing that which is a good practice and I need to maybe go ahead and sub subdivide this sheet for March just with that purpose already. I found this cute little lessons learned stamp in my stash from Studio Calico, so that's a perfect little, again, a cue that will remind me to use that page in that function because it's just a good idea for me to stop and think about things and how it all panned out. This is a sticker from the planner spot that I just came through quickly after the fact and wrote down like all the days that I had posted on Instagram. You may have spotted this consistency 2021 here on this label for my mission board and I initially started the month with the goal of posting on Instagram every day of the month. It was a challenge that my friend Anita had pointed out to me online and I got a few days into it and quickly realized that like number one it was like a bunch of like fashion influencers so it just didn't make sense for me to kind of you know use the same hashtag it wasn't really I'm not in that realm at all and so that felt a little bit weird and then number two I just find over and over again just to remind myself um, not to feel like I have to post on Instagram or have to post on social media the more I can just let it evolve because I'm excited to share something I feel that's being true to myself and therefore hopefully more enjoyable for people to see I think posts that are just there like to be a post for Tuesday can again kind of fall flat and just like rah, rah, rah. so I'm just working on that I mean I think it's awesome if you want to grow your Instagram you know, consistency is a great goal and obviously posting every day does get you out in open eye a little bit more. But for me, I'm a lot more about quality than quantity. And I mean, having said that, I'm not saying that all my posts are quality, but it's a goal of mine, probably more so than quantity. So that wraps up like kind of the monthly section. Then I have dailies that follow that. And I usually find my dailies with this clear little page marker. And I just go ahead and stick it into the current day that I'm at. And you'll find that this month, I'm going to flip through these quickly. I didn't use dailies much. Um, I go ahead and like the beginning, like on a Sunday or the weekend, I will stamp for the next week and I you know kind of think through like what days am I actually going to be probably in my office is really when I use these and so if I'm just being realistic you know it's usually Monday Wednesday Friday sometimes I will do Monday through Friday because there are days that I spend on Tuesdays and Thursdays here in my office but I just I stamp them out I stamp usually a week at a time all in the same format just to get them kind of done and processed and then you can see like the following the final week I just I did it a little bit differently and 
um, ended up with the Friday here. So I have yet to get there and I'm, I mean the month isn't over yet. I'm still kind of in the process of using these. My feedback on this is I'm not a huge fan of the hourly breakdown. I recognize that a lot of you use that because maybe your days are heavily scheduled. I think I mentioned in my previous video that if I'm going to break down my day into like sections or chunks of time, I'm a little bit more likely to do that on my iCal because I can then drag it if something comes up, I need more time, I need less time. I really like to be able to adjust it better like digitally versus scratching something out and rewriting it. So for me, I really like the morning. Um, I started off the month with those, the morning, afternoon, and evening version because I can kind of jot some notes of like here's what I want to work on, but then as far as like putting them to actual times, I'm definitely more likely to do that on my computer or on my phone. So that's kind of where I'm at with the daily pages, and I'm really happy that I just use the undated because I feel like I use them when I need them, and if I don't need them, then I don't feel guilty about, you know, having seven days that went blank and wasted. This is just how they're working for me. March, I will definitely go back to the, like I said, the morning, afternoon, evening method and probably won't use the hourly. Having said that, Jennifer reached out to me and she asked me to design this in the Happy Planner Classic size with like four big blocks over here, not timed, just like four squares basically. And she's going to use that a little bit more like as a blocking kind of schedule for her day. And I thought that's awesome. Like if you have work, family, you know, whatever sections or categories you want to divide your day into, I mean, that's kind of cool too. So I might print some of those out in the half letter here and just test them out. It's kind of similar to this morning, afternoon, evening, but just a slightly different way of breaking it down. So I'm kind of excited to try that. Good idea, Jennifer. And I love getting ideas from you guys, by the way. And that pretty much sums up for like my personal section of February. Now, what I am liking about this, Zena, you asked, you know, what I liked about the difference between half letter and personal wide, is that this has always been a size that I feel like I can manage my business in a little bit better. I need a little bit more space for whatever reason. I can't work in teeny tiny surfaces. So this I have printed out and kind of just customized this for myself. I'm always evolving, always trying to find new ways to kind of manage myself here with inserts. But this I'm using to just kind of have an overview of the month. Here I came through and realized like if I'm designing March inserts, like let me break them down and give myself deadlines so that I'm not trying to do it all in one week and you know just space myself out a little bit better. So I just gave myself some deadlines for the for the next month's designs that I wanted to have done. And then I just reminded myself here like this month you're featuring these inserts, you're designing these inserts. And then on this I just kind of created a a format that I could follow that's like February what I would like to feature this month like the inserts that I would like to create samples for update my shop photos etc and these are the inserts that I would like to design during the month of February so you can see I came through I did the ones that I wanted for the most part I color code them of course and I have my listings reflected on Etsy so like if you're looking for half letter you're gonna want to find the green inserts if you're looking for personal they're yellow I try to do that just to kind of help things be a little bit more easy to find. You could always shop by section though in Etsy, so you just go over and click A6 and all of the A6 listings will pop up. But I would say that this is where I have room for improvement. This is hard because it's one thing to get everything designed. It's another thing to print and decorate and you know show them in use. And so that's something I'm still working for. That's kind of one of the things that I'm going to try to do a better job in March. I feel like having the deadlines for the design work helped prod me along on the design part, so I might need to create some of those for the feature, you know, so that I'm featuring. I also had it here, so it's like I have decorated it, meaning that would be like I updated it in, I add a photo to my listing, which Etsy recommends that. They, they give you an option to have like 13 photos, I think, or something like that, maybe nine, and they really encourage you to use all of those so that you're showing the product from different perspectives. And so a lot of those I just have the simple little, you know, digital element. I don't actually have samples shown. So a goal of mine is to include samples and Etsy will then supposedly help promote those listings more likely. So that's kind of that first category is to decorate. Then I should probably like share it on social media. So I have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Pinterest here are, you know, have those things have they been cross shared. And this is, I think, literally up to date. So clearly I don't do an amazing job of cross sharing. And I actually am gonna switch that up a little bit instead of Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to put like, did I update my listing and did I add a video? Because those are things that are both like Etsy promotion. Like I said, they, they will promote my listings more likely if I have those. So just kind of trying to 
to work that system and then, you know, see it from here. I'm getting to the place where I have over 100 listings, so I can't manage them, like, as well on, like, the screen. I kind of need to break them down into smaller categories, and that's how I'm doing that. So there's that. And real quick, I will show you just a couple of samples that I created this month. Hang on. If you follow me on Instagram, I recognize that it's a little weird to have, like, an A6 insert suddenly pop up or a personal size. But I do this because I really do want to, like I said, have those listing photos for Etsy primarily. And then to give someone an idea, like, if you're looking at A6, size, I don't really want to show you a half letter because they don't necessarily pan out the same. I can use larger impact size, you know, items on a half letter size and I need to start, you know, selecting smaller scale things for an A6 or a pocket. So it's good for me to just spend some time using these, like these little icon stickers are a hit and you'll notice I don't put a a, a surrounding label around them or like you know like I do in my bigger size planner because there's no space for it and it just I also just want to make sure like do these icon stickers even fit in these squares or are they too small I need to kind of know that you know the products out on the market can be used on these inserts so that's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to test out as I do these and just also just show you guys you know if you're looking at that size specific how you might be able to put them to use. So I think, yeah, A6, I did, I decorated it, and I I even shared that on Instagram, so I did mark that alright already. And then similar for February here, I did the same thing, and I, I basically do, I just take my schedule, I'm not technically planning for myself here, but instead of just making up nonsense, I basically take my monthly schedule, and I kind of work it out, and test out different materials or supplies. And so this one, you can see, I just used some clear transparent dots, kept it really simple, some um, plain washi strip from the planner spot and I've shared this before I absolutely love the planner spot I love so many of the products that she uses and I try to put as many to use I use her vellums a lot her cards but sometimes her stickers I feel like they are so pretty for me to look at number one I'm kind of intimidated to use them number two they're a little bit glamorous I'm not like that glamorous I'm still kind of just the colorful girl over here so this is a good way for me to use these to test them out and then you know it may not necessarily be in my main planner but it makes me feel like I'm using them and I'm enjoying them and and they're kind of working for me for in a different format not necessarily for my own personal planning but they're working for me like for my business so there's that, and then like the back, just taking that grid and just maybe divvying it up, you know, to do errands, to buy, just giving people some ideas of how they can take that grid and put it to use in their planner. And then this was a new insert I designed for personal size because um, I released all the halvesies for March coming forward, and halvesies like in this smaller, narrower format can get pretty narrow, and I didn't know if it was really usable, so I'd love to offer the fold out for personal size, and I could potentially do this for pocket. I don't know why. I don't think I did pocket, because I felt like it would be so small, but a fold out would be a viable option for pocket, so I may whip that up and get it listed, but I really liked how this turned out, and then I did another week too, just for fun, using the planner spot kit and I I love the way this looks like if I could this would be my other way I would plan like if I didn't use color this is kind of how it would look just a little bit more neutral but uh, still really classy I hope yeah so so those are just an example of kind of what I've been up to that's what I'm trying to do on Fridays when I have a little bit more time maybe not designing maybe not filming but just sampling and providing some samples in other sizes. So if like that's an explanation too, if you see something pop up on social media in a size that you know I'm not using, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to give some ideas. Okay, and then so right here at the very end, basically like if I flip to the next month and then go backwards, that's how I try to find these, I have something here that is I'm flipping ahead to Marches because it's blank and has no information, but this is kind of my business specific monthly fold out. So you'll see I have those same aqua dots there on Sundays to kind of remind me for prompting my Facebook group. This one I haven't even dated or prepared it per se yet, but I have a spot here kind of for weekly goals or maybe things that I want to work on that week. I I did an every other space kind of gray and white to kind of provide some lines without there being lines and I just keep track of some of my affiliate sales as well as my Etsy sales and I have a spot here to list my top 10 at the end of the month I come through and just check and see like which inserts were popular that helps me gauge interest and like maybe I go ahead and like focus on sampling some of those pages just to make sure that people are getting ideas on how to use them this is just a big blank space that I can use however I want. And then I do track my social media growth and then my overall revenue here. I take the totals from the back page and add them here. 
for the different categories. So that's just kind of some way that I keep myself on track. And this is a large part of why I wanted to use the discs because I've had this kind of method in rings and discs and in Inkwell Press. I've tried all different ways to gather this information, but ultimately I really want these, like I will be keeping these specific things together for future years so that I can track like 2018, 2019, April, next to 2020, April, next to 2021, April, I can kind of look at the whole month and like how it panned out across, you know, several years. That's my goal with that anyway. So just again, another way of kind of keeping track. So I hope that that gives you guys a good glimpse into February. I hope that answers your questions, Zena and Camille. Thanks for jumping in on Facebook and prompting me with some questions. I think that this has been a really positive experience. I'm looking forward to setting aside some colors in March. It's fun to look back and then to also recognize like that these coordinate with these, you know, it's definitely going to be easy for me to identify my pages by the month going forward and going back. Okay guys, thanks so much with that. I will sign off and catch you on the next video.